So I would I would like to request everyone to please settle down as we prepare for the opening.
again. I am requesting everyone to please settle down as we prepare for the opening ceremonies.
So, good afternoon to each and everyone. Um, I hope ano, nakapag-settle down at po tayong lahat as we begin the opening ceremony for this afternoon's activity.
ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our two-day information webinar on water systems, safety, and quality. Before anything else, we would like to introduce ourselves first. I am Luis Marily, and together with me is Jana Rojas. And we are going to be the masters of the ceremony for this afternoon's activity. So for our opening message, she is a member of Chunago Research Team and Claret Research Team with her works entitled Circadian Rhythm, Neurological and Environmental Factors that Affect the Quality of Sleep and Reverse Alley Cropping with Canna Lily as Phytoremediation and Nitrogen Fixing Plant. Let us welcome Ms. Aubrey Ann Tubo. Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay, and thank you, Ms. Jana. So hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is an absolute pleasure to welcome everyone in our informative webinar about water system safety and quality regarding water pollution 
and microplastics under the Claret Research Team and Microsoft International Tech for Good Project. I am extending great gratitude towards our research moderator, Sir Daniel Hernandez and the rest of the team who put their utmost effort for this ongoing webinar. So furthermore, the Tech for Good project is about inspiring students in the STEM field to use their intelligence, determination, and the will to change the world for the better in the future. It is not a competition, but an opportunity for young students to share their ideas and their potential through teamwork in the field of science and technology globally connecting with fellow students around the world whose aim is to ensure a new and better future for us and the upcoming generation. So uh, thank you, Clarette, for giving Clarissians the opportunity to hone their shining potential, to innovate to where it's needed the most. Challenging challenges, specifically about water systems in Zamboanga City, with the objective of providing solutions for a sustainable environment, hopeful to inspire other students to take action together. So again, I welcome you all to our webinar. And as they say, let the waves begin. Thank you so much, Ms. Aubrey Antubo, for the opening remarks. And now to proceed with our session one about water and pollution, the speaker is currently the mentor of Claret Research Team. His research works are more on physics demonstration, physics education, and material science. His works then published and presented in national conferences. Two of his papers were named as the as best poster paper in two national physics conference in Mapua University and controversialization of S SPVM. The speaker's research interest is more on application of material science, especially, especially non-fibrillated materials for industrial and environmental application. Of course, on astronomy and cosmological astroparticle physics. He is also the Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. Let us all welcome Mr. Daniel Hernandez. Good afternoon, everyone. Next slide. Sound check, sound. Mic test. So, um, stand by lang muna tayo as we are currently having a technical difficulty. Ayun po. Wait lang po muna tayo.
sound check. Okay. Uh, how about the rest? Please give me a uh, heads up if I have an audio already. Okay. I have an audio. Thank you very much, Anna, for the wonderful introduction. So I'm going to talk about one of my uh, current, uh, one of our, the goals of this uh, Tech for Good project, especially uh, in connection to my current research work on uh, particle trapping uh, using, uh, using extracted wood plants, especially on how, uh, how do we trap uh, heavy metal particles from particulate or suspended particulate matter. Um, next slide. Um, I will just turn off my video. I, I kept on changing from one location to another because uh, there's some technical difficulties right now. But I'll just turn off my camera for for a good internet connection. So first is you need to understand what is water. Water is a is also known as the universal solvent with a chemical structure of two hydrogens and an oxygen. The oxygen as you can see in the illustration, is bonded with the main, uh, with the two hydrogens, and water is used always in in dissolving materials. And and what's the use of water in trapping particulate matter is, is that water is the most natural resource that we have here on our planet Earth. And in our planet, it is covered with water and by how much water is co uh, covering our planet which is approximately equal to 71 percent 71 percent and within the 71 percent coverage of land water uh, is of water rather is 97 percent is salt water and the three percent would be fresh water now And the, the fresh water is primarily known as surface, surface water, mm -hmm. or these are the ones, uh, water resources or water systems that has uh, that is found um, above the continental plate and the oceanic plate of our planet. And the other one is also known as the groundwater, which is majority of the groundwater consists or contains the fresh water, like spring waters glaciers, ice caps, and so on, as long as they are found uh, beneath the earth of our planet. And these two, and these two kinds of water systems, surface water and groundwater, are prone to contamination and pollution. And the number one contamination uh, factor that we need to check is what we know as particulate matter pollution. According to some resources, such as the paper of Hui, Pang, Zhou, and Ren, and the, in their study on efficient particle trapping using ultrasonic, uh, ultrasonic modification, is that prim particulate matter is more on or has become the primary pollutant in the planet. Especially, this particulate matter is not found in our water systems, but they are found in our air. Because particulate particulate matter comes in a form of gaseous particles, and these gaseous particles uh, brings a significant contribution in our in the air pollution. Why why does it make it more significant? Because it 
increases the con uh, the concentration of the particulate matter in our in our environment. Another paper talks about another paper talks about how heavy metal capture of suspended particulate matter so, uh, tells us that tells us that particulate matter is suspended in terrestrial objects such as plants and other living organisms that is found here here in our planet and they have said that this particulate matter comes from industrialization transportation and waste recycling so those even this is a product of the industrial revolution 3.0 2.0 and 3.0 these are also some consequences of our actions here in our planet. And if too much particle matter pollution or accumulation of particle, uh, particle, uh, particle, particulate matter in the sense causes a, a great uh, significant increase of significant increase of, of uh, concentrations in a different uh, land form such as the soil, the air, and of course our water. But where does where does uh, water comes in in particulate matter pollution? Now, particulate matter is being suspended in water systems when they are when they are being transmitted in our air. And at certain point, particulate matter uh, is being trapped inside the water system of our of different water systems that we are trying to enjoy in our everyday life. One of the paper, the one study that talks about suspend, uh, suspended particulate matter is written by Chen, Zhang, Dong, Duan, Zhou, and Li in China. They have mentioned that majority of the suspended particulate matter in the water systems in, in, nor in Northwest China composed of phenolic compounds and aromatic compounds. Another paper would also talk about that suspended particulate matter contains organophosphate testers. And these, these uh, particular compounds, aromatic compounds, or organic compounds, are very crucial and very deadly and, and toxic in the uh, great challenges to our health. Now, not just organic compounds, but majority of the paper would talk about that particulate matter consists of heavy metal heavy metal elements or heavy metal such as zinc, copper, mercury, um, we have arsenic, lead, and so on and so forth. So this particulate matter, is we cannot see this in with our own naked eye. This particulate matter, particulate matter is being found with trace amounts only. When we talk about trace amounts of particulate matter, this doesn't come with a standard measurement of liters, milliliters, or grams, uh, centigrams, but they come in a form of they come in a form of nanogram. Say for example, a very small. That's why it's also known as particulate matter because they come in a form of particles that it cannot be seen, but at least cannot be seen with our own naked eye. So a very small amount is being distributed, is being swooped uh, swoop by our air. But when they are, when they join together, when they are being accumulated in one place, that would lead to a massive change in our environment, especially in our climate system. Next slide, please. Now, several papers would debate on what are the different, uh, what are different sources of particulate matter pollution, or we know as suspended particulate matter pollution. Now, majority of the papers, such as the paper of Cahoon, uh, according to them, according to Cahoon, that water pollution is more, is the great number, the majority of the water pollution cases that we have right now in the global, in the global context is, is caused by waste, toxic waste that is being dumped into our water systems and so on and so forth. Another paper would also dispute that it would also dispute that it is caused by pesticides that we use 
especially when these pesticides are used in agricultural land that is near in a body of water or surface water. Another paper would also dispute that that it is caused by the humidity of the wind, wind humidity that is the, uh, that is used to to distribute our, our air particles or particulate matter using wind. And another another paper would also uh, also suggest that water pollution that is caused by but is caused by suspended particulate matter argues that argues that the the sources of this pollution is caused by a numerous factor human factor and environmental factor but lastly these resources these are uh, these papers only talks about one significant paper uh, one significant idea that is being that we use or that we can understand is that, is that these sources of suspended particulate matter is, or majority of the suspended particulate matter is a consequence of all of the actions that caused by, by humans and the, the effect is visible. The effects of uh, the pollution that is uh, consequence of our action is visible in our different water systems here in our planet. Now if we take a closer look into the context of in the context of our nation in the Philippines, we have uh, we have various water systems. We have uh, poles, we have beaches, we have rivers, uh, rivers, oceans. Even though our own peninsula we are uh, we are surrounded with a vast space of water. But are we even assured and sure enough that our water is safe and sound? Now that's the that's the question that we want to talk about also here in our challenge is that even though that we enjoy our our system, water systems, we we consider it as a, a resource of a water resource, drinking resource, but there are cons uh, there are pros and cons in enjoying this uh, these water resources and it has been found out recent studies conducted by the department of environment and natural resources and the department of science and technology majority of this uh they recently they were able to encounter that there is a, a huge uh, increase of the equalizer factor in the water system in bolivard in our in our bolivard and also in other water systems like in along the west coast and along the east coast of our city. So majority of this is caused by the different waste that we use or that we throw along the coastal areas, the different waste that is being that is being uh, accumulated in different households. And of course the the effects of air pollution that would uh, that allows the spread of particulate matter. Now I've been mentioning that particulate matter is majority the the major contributor of particulate matter pollution is uh, coming is coming from an air air resource. But majority of the papers would also argue that that uh, particulate matter doesn't come only doesn't come only in in a in a particle size or in a in a gaseous space, but uh, uh, a great number of particulate matter from uh, uh, is also coming from solid material such as uh, solid and liquid material such as our different waste because of the disintegration of the chemical structure of this particular object or this particular material. Now, because ma majority of our waste are in plastic form, and remember that our plastics are made of polymers and these are synthetic polymers a uh, majority of these are is not difficult uh, it's very difficult for these polymers to break down without without uh, synthetic uh, technology or uh, other technology that would allow the, the fast a fast uh, degradation or uh, what we call as what we call as the 
the breakdown of the different structures of our plastic. So majority of the plastic, is, even though they would say that their plastic material is an oxobiodegradable, meaning uh, oxobiodegradable meaning hindi siya like it has a uh, it has a short lifespan, no. Uh, unlike other other plastic materials, that would take ten to fifty years that the material would break uh, would break. But also biodegradable is claiming that is claiming that also biodegradable materials has a shorter lifespan and easier to break. But even though they have a, this a shorter lifespan, it is still causing uh, it is still causing or the in, the increase of suspended particulate matter in the different water systems and the different environment and environmental locations in our planet. And of course, these are products of industrialization. Now, majority, not majority, all of the sources of suspended particulate matter is a product of industrialization. And one of the products of industrialization is undergoing the process of industrial waste disposal. The waste that is being disposed by our factories our uh, our power plants and so on and so forth. And in this, the different ways that is being disposed by our big factories, our big, uh, our plants or power plants, comes in a form of liquid solution or liquid matter, or we know as effluents. And this effluents contains different toxic chemicals because we are using in in industry we do not use natural products, majority of which majority that we're using in our industries are synthetic uh, synthetic materials and in creating synthetic materials we are using toxic uh, toxic ingredient reagents that would that has a, a high volatilization and creating a huge uh, creating a great damage in our uh, to our health when we are exposed into a greater uh, concentration another Another process of industrialization or a consequence of industrialization is the excessive use and excessive supply of plastics. Of course, we cannot, we cannot, uh, we cannot um, disregard the use of plastics. And these plastics has been has been part of our lives since uh, since when we were young. When we were young, it's part of our lifestyle already. But Excessive accumulation and excessive use of plastics would lead to a longer degra uh, degradation, a longer degra uh, degradation of materials, and one of the another major contributor of accumulation of suspended particle materials because of the breakdown of these different plastics. And this industrial waste disposal and excessive use of plastics is always a uh, correlated in the process of having a good industry because if if we have a larger way uh, the waste disposal we have accumulated a huge number of waste and a huge number of plastic it only it only shows that our our industry is booming because there are more there are more products that are being created by our local industry and, and if there are more products are being created, more materials, raw materials are being gathered and being used. And as a, as a consequence, there are more, uh, uh, a huge number of waste that is being accumulated is being thrown into our different landfills, our different water systems. Next slide, please. Now, the Tech for Good Challenge, we have been, we have been, uh, we're trying to, measure also that we are also trying to measure how much suspended particles or uh, suspended matter particles or this is being accumulated by our city. Majority, what we're trying to focus is the water system in our city. So this is a uh, this is a Google Earth screenshot, uh, a live screenshot from Google, the Google satellite um, that shows the the coast of Bolong. Now, if you're wondering why we why we chose Bolong, particularly it's far from the city. 
Oh. Because Bolo is a very good spot. One of the one of the best spot in in finding out different water systems, water resources in our city. So it's it's a hot spot for or uh the one that connects to other the one that connects to other water systems such as the island the islands of near Bolong Beach the the eleven uh the eleven islands uh, and the other islands near the Bolong and if you go um go along the uh the highway go along where the main road is being tracked by our our cars on the other side is another going to Bungyao and Gisau and, and other barangays. They are also connected with with the Bolong Delta, which is this one, uh, which is the the mouth of the Bolong River, and the main resource comes from the Bolong River. Now we try we try uh, analyzing the amount of particulate matter using three parameters. So later on, uh, we will be uh, I will be showing you what are the different parameters that we try to consider in identifying the, the amount of suspended particulate matter in the different coastal areas. Now in in the case of Bolo, we try to analyze, we try to use or we try to find out this uh, on these different areas. The one that is near in Amor Beach and the 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 river near the near the, the main road or in the MCLL highway. Another another area that we want to consider also is this uh, is the area of Sambuwood. And another because why did we choose Sambuwood? Because this is also another spot where we can connect to other uh, in other barangays that is near the city. And these barangays are industrial barangays that has uh, a huge number of community population and and industrial places such as markets. Um, Local area. Paper size. Like Next slide, like please. Okay. Now, particularly, we are trying to locate here the the area where we want to test the suspended particle ma particulate matter in this area is the one that is that connects the Mercedes River. And the one that connects Mampang River and Zambu Wood River, where it, where there is a local wood plant, maybe uh, there's a local uh, wood plant here in Zambu Wood, and we try to, this is what we call the Zambu Wood Estuary. That's uh, the the red, uh, yeah, yung my red circle. That's the area where we try to test the, the number or the amount of suspended particulate. Matter. Now these three locations are very ideal because they are closer to industrial areas and hard to is uh, it's hard to reach by other people. Though there are there are lots of people that's coming uh, that's going to this area enjoying their vacation, uh, they're enjoying their their lives. But we also wanted to see that these these areas. Are, are not polluted enough by suspended particulate matter that is caused by uh, that comes from our waste and and air pollution. Next slide, please. Now. The concern of that for good challenge in SPM pollution, or what we call a suspended particulate matter pollution, is that in these three sites, what would happen if we we try to 
we try to increase the number of increase the number of industrial waste that's being thrown in our in this different area so what would what would happen if we if we keep on accumulating plastic materials toxic waste to to this uh surface water so this uh, one of uh, our target is surface water here that's why we have the Bolong Beach, the Bolong River, and the Zambu Wood Expedition. A good example of surface water. Now, what would happen? The concern of Talk for Good Challenge here is that what would happen to us, to our community, if we keep on polluting our water systems that would host suspended particulate matter? Now, the suspended particulate matter would come in a form of uh, accumulated or or degrade uh, uh, a cause of degradation of different plastics, different uh, toxic materials that is being thrown everywhere. So if if we can see in the in the picture, it you might you might might you might comment that this is a, a clear one. No, there are no waste are uh, present. But if we try to take a look on the surroundings of this one, a huge number of plastic waste. Uh, toxic materials is, is being thrown along the, the, the side, along the different parts of these water systems. And our concern in this, in this challenge is that what would happen to us if we keep on increasing the number of waste, the uh, waste that, that is being accumulated? And what would happen to our water systems? What would happen to our own health if we keep on increasing the concentration of suspended particulate matter through excessive use or excessive use of uh, plastics, uh, wrong waste management disposal, and irresponsible uh, cleansing? Next slide, please. Now, using the, the concern of Tech for Good Challenge, our goal now. One of our goals is to identify using three parameters of SPM pollution. What are the three different parameters that we want to use in SPM pollution? It is the presence of microplastics in our system, the presence of toxics and heavy metals in our water systems, and of course, um, the presence of harmful bacteria or microorganisms in our water systems that would lead that will all allow us to connect um, industrial waste and plastic, uh, industrial waste disposal, uh, industrial waste disposal, and waste disposal as our primary factor or primary contributor of suspended particulate matter in our system. Now, why why do you want to talk about microplastics, toxic toxic and heavy metals, and bacterial contamination? It's because when these uh, these plastics, these materials would would deteriorate and degrade, uh, undergo degradation, the main the main systems that is affected are our water systems. And microplastics has been now uh, has been the recent trend in the in the area of sciences because a number of uh, a number of Microplastic has been detected already in a, uh, in a great amount of fishes that we are eating. Even though we cannot see the plastics that is uh, the plastics in our fishes, but it is also being digested or ingested by the land animals. Along which the presence of heavy metals as uh, as effluents are being mixed to our water resources. And these toxic materials would cause would cause a great damage in our marine eco, in marine ecosystem, and of course that would cause a great damage to our health, especially when these toxic materials keeps on accumulating and increasing the concentration. Because uh, heavy metals are are only safe at a certain amount, but if too much 
heavy metals are being accumulated in a water system, then the water system will become contaminated and uh, harmful for our body. And of course, of course, uh, we would also want to check if there would be an increase of there would be an increase of microorganisms, harmful microorganisms and bacteria when our water systems are are contaminated with with waste uh, different wastes and plastic that is accumulated by our actions. And this way uh, industrial waste plastics would uh, would deteriorate and become our main resource of particle mat uh, particulate matter and suspended particulate matter. Next slide, please. And I would uh, and this and these uh, things would only constitute to the different questions that we have in mind in this challenge. How much particulate matter is accumulated and suspended in our water systems? What are the different parameters and that we need to ensure that our safe, uh, that we have a clean and safe water and water system. And of course, what can we do to maintain clean and safe water? Thank you very much. And that ends my presentation on particulate matter pollution. I will leave you, I will leave uh, the Great Research Team motto, imagine, innovate, and inspire. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Daniel Hernandez, for sharing about water and pollution. Now for a second session, which is about microplastics. Our first speaker is a member of Claret Research Team with her works entitled Quaran Flings, The Sudden Boom of Short-Term Links Today, an assessment of senior high school students' awareness and action towards climate change. Let us welcome Ms. Maria Cristina Ho. Together with her is our spec second speaker, which is also a member of Claret Research Team, with her works entitled Teacher's Career, Why Claritian Teachers Chose to Stay in a Private School, and Botanical versus Conventional Medication, the Preferences and Reasons Behind Claritian Community's Remedy of Choice. Let us welcome Ms. Chelsea Estomago. Thank you for that, Marie. Um, can I ask lang, narinig po ba kami? Ako pala. Yes po. Thank you. Now guys, we are all amazed by the fact that our seas are filled with creatures, both big and small. However, there are also other tiny particles that flow together with them. This afternoon, we will let you meet these tiny particles we call the microplastics. But before anything else, I will first introduce you to the microplastics famous older sister that we call the plastics. Now, plastics have become more widely produced and used all over the world, resulting in an increase in the accumulation of plastic waste in the world's oceans. The low cost, high availability, and fast production of plastics allow it to be successfully used in large industries and in our everyday life. But the high durability of these polymers causes them to remain in the environment. And as plastic litter is currently piling up all over the world, it poses a threat to the ecosystem and the organisms that live within it. Microplastics have now emerged as an increasing physical contaminant in the marine environment as a result of high plastic load in Zamboanga City. Hi, good afternoon. Am I audible po? Yes po. Yes po. Okay, thank you. So when we talk about microplastics, what comes to your mind? Well, from the word itself, plastics, right? So with that being said, let me provide some facts on what microplastic is and how it differs from the regular plastic we use on a daily basis so that you will have a better knowledge of it. 
So what is microplastic? Microplastics are small particles found in the air, nature, and most especially in the water. When plastic pollution or materials enter waterways, it is referred to as microplastic. Microplastic comes from the decomposition of larger plastic items in the natural environment and tiny particles designed for commercial use. So for the information of everyone, microplastics do not decompose in the same way that natural materials do. In other words, it is non-biodegradable. So the most common examples of microplastics are nerdels, microbeads, fibers, fragments, and etc. Um, well, microplastic have been attributed with numerous size ranges varying from study to study. So from the study of Graham and Thompson in 2009, it is said that microplastic has a dimension of 10 millimeters, then 5 millimeters from the study of Barnes et al. in 2009, uh, 2 to 6 millimeters from the study of Derrick in 2002, 2 millimeters from the study of Ryan in 2009, and according to the study of Barnes in 2007 and 2010, it is said that it has a diameter of 1 millimeter. Next slide, please. Now we'll be talking about the composition of microplastics. Microplastics are made up of polymer chains of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Other compounds found in microplastics include phthalates, PBDES, and TBBPA. Many of these chemical compounds leach out of the plastics when they are released into the environment. Next slide, Bo, please. Next, sources and transfer of microplastic into the marine environment. While microplastics' enormous dispersion in the marine environment has generated various questions about their sources, quantities, toxicity, and consequences of marine food webs and ecosystem in recent decades. Uh, the distribution of microplastics on the surface of water bodies near shore beaches and sea bottom sediments vary, varies greatly by spatial differences. Uh, microplastic pollution in coastal waters is generally severe and is largely due to the intensity of human production activities, with half of the world's population living with it living within 50 miles of the coast, these types of plastics have a high risk of entering the marine environment through rivers, wastewater system, as well as being blown offshore. Microplastics come from the variety of places, but they can be classified as either primary or secondary. So what is the difference or what are the difference between the two? So primary microplastics come from the uh, direct release of small particles, such as when pellets or powders are released. On the other hand, secondary microplastics came from the fragmentation of bigger things such as bottles, fishing nets, plastic bags, and etc. So for you to remember, primary microplastic is produced as it is, while secondary microplastic is the result of fragmentation of bigger objects. Next slide, please. So as you can see in the picture flash on your screen, on the left, it is a graph uh, showing the highest amount of microplastics that are produced worldwide. And as you can see, washing of synthetic textiles produce the highest amount of microplastic, followed by erosion of car tires while driving, city dust, uh, road markings, and so on. On the other hand, on the right side, it illustrates the percentage of the production of microplastics in different regions uh, worldwide. Now for the next slide, we will talk about the impacts and challenges faced with the presence of microplastics. The presence of microplastics and the threats they bring have sparked discussions about the implications it has on human health. But despite the increased attention on the presence of microplastics, the real quantity of these components in the environment and their biological impact remain unknown. One challenging aspect in estimating the dangers of microplastics to the human environment 
correlates with the variableness of the particle's physical and chemical characteristics and as well as its concentration. This is due in part to a lack of appropriate sample and analytical procedures, as well as the sizes and the diversity of our oceans. Now, it is said that it is difficult to detect microplastics in the environment, especially when no standardized methods exist. This uncertainty hinders potential assessment of these particles, but gladly, efforts to study microplastics and its safety have been raised by many researchers. Now, another thing is that the plastics commonly used in industries and are found in the water environment are considered persistent recalcitrant materials. Next slide, please. Now, these synthetic polymers are indigestible and are semi to non-biodegradable. And once manufactured, they are impossible to get rid of. Now, the rate at which plastics decompose is exhaustively slow. And dahil nga slow siya mag-decompose, the bulk of plastics in the world end up in landfills or rivers and eventually to our marine ecosystem like the lakes and seas. Now, it becomes a permanent part of the marine environment in long history. Now, uh, given that, microplastics have a science range that allows them to come in contact with um, organisms the same size of a marine plankton. And it's becoming a more serious problem in our ocean. Now, microplastic exposure especially at high quantities, could be harmful to marine organisms. Um, I think our slide, ano o, naalis yung slide namin. Pero I'll continue lang. Now, because of the size of these microplastics, marine animals um, often mistake them as food and they and they have intake of these microplastics. Some plastics are so small that they get stuck in the tissues of animals and they travel up and down the food chain and some even get to us human beings. Now, the smaller a particle is, the easier it is for organisms at the bottom of the food chain to obtain it. Because of the harmful effects from ingestion, it is now more vital than ever to examine the impact of plastics on the entire marine food chain, as well as the consequences it has for humans as end consumers. So microplastic fragments have been found in marine ecosystem all around the world. Uh, a diverse range of creatures consume this trash, especially the sea animals, uh, just like what we have discussed earlier. So in order for us to prevent the inflation of microplastics, here are some tips, tips that we can share with you guys so that you can also have the knowledge to help prevent the increasing amount of microplastics. So first we have is to reduce or avoid the use of plastics, of course. Second, improving recycling rates. Next, preventing littering. Then filtering fibers. And then avoid, uh, avoiding microbeads. And most importantly, we should spread the word. So before we close out this session, we'd like to leave you with this saying, plastics give a helping hand, but they are polluting our ocean and land. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen and we hope you learned something, guys. So thank you so much, Miss. Uh, Chelsea Estomago and Miss Christina Ho for sharing some useful information about the uh, the session session two about microplastics. So So let us now proceed with our open forum wherein uh, if you have uh, 
queries or questions about the, the session na kinandak kanina, yung session one by Sir Daniel and yung session two by Miss Chelsea and Miss Christina Ho. So if you have questions regarding to their um, session, you may address it in our meeting chat. And kami po, mga MCs, kasama si Mari, my partner, will address it so that the speakers of the given session will answer your concern. So ayun, we are going to wait for your questions po sa meeting chat. Sound check. May, may audio na ako. May audio na ako. Yeah, sound check. May... Wala pa rin? Sound check. Sound check. Okay. Yeah, we are we are inviting everyone to please ask questions. Uh, don't worry, uh, we'll try to answer everything with the best of our knowledge. Yeah. So. Okay, so my tanong po tayo from Mr. Zydrix Bongabong. So for our speakers, hello po mga ma'am sir, madam sir. Question ko po, since microplastics can be a threat for us, 
Is it a long term or short term sa process of having a disease? Okay. Yeah. Baka Chelsea and MK muna ang mauna, no? Before ako. <laughs> Is that question thrown to whom? Uh, ano po, kina Chelsea at Christina po. Um, thank you for that question, Zai. So, um, we think that uh, microplastics um, can be a threat or a risk to um, human health um, in terms of, kasi nga nasabi namin, na-mention namin kanina about uh, the food chain. Now, once microplastics are come in contact with different marine organisms, um, there's a possibility na these microplastics will end up in our foods like our fishes and may, may possibility na may intake talaga to ng humans like us. Which is why we have mentioned that the study for its implications on human health is also important. Okay, thank you so much, Miss uh, Christina Ho, for answering the uh, question of Mr. Zydrix Bongabong. So, may iba pa bong, po bang tanong, Jan? You can address it through our meeting chat. I would like to so, ask you, siguro, Miss, uh, Miss Jana, for the, the answers of Miss MK, no? Uh, because it's um because it's a polymer. It's a polymer material. The, degra uh, the degradation of microplastics would take time. Would take time. So as as time passes by, little by little, these microplastics are being uh, undergoes breakdown or a structural breakdown, and so this mat the, the the contents or or the the structure of or the these materials that we can uh, that is being that's undergo breakdown would be released to the environment so there are cases that it's uh it's a long-term process of having a disease different diseases but we cannot really feel this uh, these diseases because it's not being developed right away in our body but we can see the effect if we try to ingest something that is polluted by microplastics if we if the fish will 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 be able to ingest microplastics then technically and we will eat when we eat the fish we will be also ingesting or taking also the microplastics that is being ingested by the fish but we cannot see right away the effect of this in our health so it would take time as we as we go along with the accumulation of the microplastics in our body and if we accumulate it inside our body then of course, it. Thank you, Mr. Daniel Hernandez, no, for the additional information or additional answer, no, sa tanong ni Mr. Zaitix Bongabo. So again, I am encouraging and everyone, no, to ask regarding sa dalawang session na binigay po sa tina ng speakers na sina Mr. Daniel and Miss Chelsea and Miss Christina Ho.
Yeah, uh, are there any other questions? We are encouraging everyone to throw some questions to our, to us. <laughs> no, it's okay. You can, we can, you can ask questions uh, through our meeting chat or siguro if you want to ask right away, uh, you may uh, open your microphone. Is that, I think, is that okay? While, while waiting for the questions, the uh, siguro one of the insights uh, that we can uh, share with you in studying microplastics and particulate matter is this is this is one of the the microplastics is not is re just recently being studied by researchers around the world. Uh, there are only few experimental investigations that is currently being conducted in the Philippines and uh, when it comes to microplastics. So, um, but this has been studied already long, uh, this has been studied already way before, but but the, the trend, the significant contributions uh, of microplastics or the significant effect of microplastics has then been recently stu be, uh, being studied due to uh, the fast growing industrialization of the planet there are those are some factors why uh, studying microplastics is also uh, very fun and enjoyable Um, hello, am I audible po? Yes po. Um, my question po kasi dito sa chat box, um, what is, why is erosion of tires while driving is considered to be a primary, primary microplastics? I'm very curious because tires are made of rubber. So just like what I have discussed earlier po, there are two types of uh, microplastic first is the primary microplastics where it is produced as it is while secondary microplastic is the uh, fragmentation of uh, bigger objects so tires erosion kasi for example while nagda-drive ka di ba parang napupudpud yan yung um, tires so parang uh, uh, parang nagki-create siya ng small particle so kaya siya uh, isa sa mga pinakamataas na nagko-consume ng microplastic sa uh, worldwide. Yun po. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Chelsea, for answering the question of uh, Mr. Zydrix again. No? So, Mr. Zydrix is really a curious person. <laughs> Ayan, so... I am again encouraging everyone if may tanong po ba sa um, dalawang session na binigay kanina ng ating mga speakers, you may address it through our meeting chat. Or if you you ano, if you want to unmute your microphones, you may feel free.
sound check on ha sound check sound check oh okay okay so we have a question again from Mr. Cedric Bongabong. Hello po, may tanungin po alot. Ulit ako, Madam Sir. This is for Sir Daniel. How particulate matter can bring an impact to a person's health since according to the researchers that are involved in the study, it can affect a person held in low concentrations. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, thank you Luis for the question. Okay, may audio. I think I, I have a good audio naman siguro na. Um uh yes, uh how does particulate matter can bring an impact to a person's health? Uh it brings an impact, a deadly impact actually. Because if we try to analyze, even though when we talk about low concentrations, uh there are only small amounts or small trace amounts present. But the nature of having uh having particulate matter and particulate matter primarily is composed of heavy metals majority of the particulate matter is heavy metals and these heavy metals are toxic in our body our body cannot tolerate a, uh, a trace even a trace amount of heavy metals that that would come inside our body so even at low concentration or low amount of heavy metals or spm in our body uh, or will enter our body it will directly affect the different organs in our body that would lead to uh, poisoning and, of course, organ failure. Okay, so thank you very much, Sir Daniel, for the uh, <clears throat> wonderful answer. Sa tanong ulit ni Mr. Zydex. So, I think that's it for this afternoon's um, open forum. Okay? So, let us now proceed to the awarding of certificates to our um, lovely speakers to acknowledge their effort and their um, time no sa pag um, commit, pagbigay ng uh, session sa webinar na to. Okay. Okay. So, uh, while waiting for the presentation of um, certificates now, uh, may pahabol na tanong po tayo from Mr. Roy Gentro Malayo. So, hello po, ma'am, sir. How can microplastic affect corals? Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, while waiting for, I think I, I, I would like to uh, also answer this one. Microplastics can, of course, um the the breakdown of microplastics really says uh um of course plastics before we go into microplastics we we should also understand that it comes from plastic talaga you know, for, when plastics would uh, would undergo structural breakdown or will break into small bits or they will become degrade uh it will undergo degradation they would release uh they there would be a release of toxins or chemicals that that compose the polymer no so these materials or these uh, chemicals really uh is that is being released to the uh, to the water parang it contributes also to coral bleaching no although coral, coral bleaching is ano naman is caused by intense heat uh, intense heat and imbalance uh uh, saline, uh, imbalance of salination but microplastics can destroy the corals because there it tends to contaminate the the corals wherein they don't have sufficient food no hindi na hindi na sila makaka parang nagkakaroon ng trapping of uh, natatabunan yung mga holes or spores ng mga corals natin 
I think that uh, that's one point to consider uh, how microplastic can affect corals. Parang there the structural breakdown releases uh, chemicals that is deadly to the sea. So not just the, the the marine life, the fishes and other organisms, but also the corals are also affected due to the release of the different chemicals during structural breakdown. Okay. Thank you so much, po, uh, Sir Daniel, again, for answering the question of Mr. Roy Jeff from Malayo about uh, microplastic affecting the corals. So um, let's proceed to the awarding of certificates to um, certificates of appreciation to our lovely speakers. So first off, Certificate of Appreciation to Mr. Daniel Hernandez with his paper, Understanding the Nature of Water Systems and Particulate Pollution. Next. Certificate of Appreciation. Appreciation to Maria Cristina Waiho with her paper, Meet the Little Ones, Microplastics on Marine Environment. Certificate of Appreciation is also given to Chelsea Jane S. Estomago with her paper, Meet the Little Ones, Microplastics on Marine Environment. Okay, so let me repeat again. So Claret School of Zamboanga City awards this certificate of appreciation to Chelsea Jane as a stomago with her paper, Meet the Little Ones, Microplastics on Marine Environment. Next. Okay. So let me repeat again. Current School of Zamboanga City uh, awards the certification of appreciation to Maria Cristina Ho, Why Ho, with her paper, Meet the Little Ones Microplastics on Marine Environment. For the contributions and insight, insights as a plenary speaker during the water systems safety and quality, the, informa the information webinar, Let the Waves Boom, held on January 14, 2022, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Philippine Standard time live via Zoom. Signed by Miss, Mrs. Christy D. Argumera, Senior High School Assistant Principal for Academic Affairs, Father Christopher, Christopher B. Ligason, CMF, School Director, and Mrs. Daisy B. Natividad, High School Principal. Thank you. That would be all for the certificate of, uh, for the awarding of certificates rather to our lovely speakers. And now, Marie, for your next step. Congratulations to all of the speakers for today. So to sum up all the sessions um, for day one, um, the speaker is a member of Claret Research Team with her works entitled Online Ex Class Exposure as a Hindrance on the Academic Performances of the Students in Claret School of Zamboanga City and the Effects of Temperature on Soil Quality of Plant Growth. Let us welcome Ms. Noijen Paghubasan. Hi, hello. Um, marinig po ako? Yes po. Yes po. 
Um, thank you for the wonderful speaker, Christina and Chelsea. So the recap of this session is about microplastic in the marine environment. And my thoughts in this topic, uh, uh, microplastic is a composition of polymer change and carbon and hydrogen atoms. Microplastic can be transferred into marine environments that can be made into primary or secondary, and it could be harmful to marine organisms. Just like sea animals, microplastic, there is a possibility that they can end up in a sea animals that can affect our human health. Preventing this can help prevent the reduction of plastic and littering by avoiding microbeads and spreading the word. Um, according to the uh, according to my perspective, not all plastic waste is waste because it it can help our society have a better future. Because plastic can be recycled, what is plastic recycled into? Recycled plastic are used to create all sorts of items such as packaging bags or compo components, uh, furniture, building materials, paint pots, and even curbstone. Sadly, society doesn't know how to deal with plastic waste. Plastic waste contaminates the sea, re sea rivers and lakes and it's becoming a threat to health too we should all work together to ensure that each of us can look forward to a, bri a brighter future tech for uh, tech for good challenge are studying particular areas to find the main reason for this contamination um the three parameters are microplastic toxic heavy metals and bacteria please stay Tune on day two, just go directly to Facebook and search for current research team for more updates and end this session with a quote, thousands of people have gone without love, but not a single person has gone without water. That's for all. Thank you so much, Ms. Norwegian Pagubasan, for the uh, wrap up of the activity So for this afternoon's activity no so to close this uh first day of webinar i would like to invite everyone to open their cameras for the picture picture taking no for ano para may documentation tayo ayan hinihikayat ko po ang lahat na buksan ng kanilang mga camera para sa uh, picture taking ayan Wait a minute, wait lang. Uh, and? Ah, si Gedna, si Gedna. Ready na po ba ang lahat? Okay. Okay, so mag-signal lang po ako. I, I hope uh, ready na po ang lahat. Mag-signal lang po ako. One, two, three. Ilang slides? Okay. Sa uh, apat? Okay. So, uh, smile lang po tayo ha, hanggang sa matapos yung apat na slides. No? So, smile na po tayo, okay? First slide, smile po tayo. One, two, three, smile. Okay na? Okay. So, sa second slide po, smile na po tayo. One, two, three, smile. Okay, so third slide po. One, two, three, smile. Okay, for our last slide, no? Sige po, ngiti po tayo, okay? One, two, three. Smile, smile. <laughs> okay, na thank po. So, I na picture. So, Sir Dana, my additional information. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, oh, Dana for and Mary for hosting this event. Also, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon for our day one of the webinar se webinar series on water systems quality, uh, safety, and quality. So, um, 
we have posted already our evaluation link for this afternoon's event. So let me uh, uh, share with you the process of the how the evaluation would uh, would happen. As you go along the evaluation form, in the last part of the evaluation evaluation form, we would like you guys to be part of our campaign, uh, especially be part of the international campaign for clean and safe water. So this, uh, actually, this activity is is a participating activity of Claret Research Team for the Tech for Good Challenge 2021. This is an international campaign for uh, safe and clean water to Tech for Good Challenge 2021 by We Schools and powered by Microsoft. Uh, so in the last part of our evaluation form, uh, we will be asking you to join our our two platforms. We will ask you to join the the Flipgrid and Slack, where you will uh, where we will be uh, we will be asking you to to share your thoughts on the different co topics that we that we um, have this afternoon. So join us in Flipgrid and and slack for your thoughts so we I, we want to hear from you what are your thoughts on these topics for day one for water pollution and for microplastics so we'll be hearing from you we'll be hearing your thoughts through this uh through these platforms in flipgrid and in slack in slack it's a discussion forum while in flipgrid it's a twitter video it's a twitter uh, it's like a twitter video thread so instead of having words, we will be sharing your thoughts through video, and this uh, and this will be part of our international campaign. So yeah, so of course uh, we'll be asking you to send your to send a screenshot of your submitted video in our platforms and your submitted discussion in our platforms so that you can receive your certificate of participation for day one. So. Uh, I think uh, that's all. So thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. So again, the, the evaluation forms are ready, are posted in your in our meeting chat. So just click the link, and we'll be we'll be happy to hear a feedback from you guys. So I would like to uh, thank also the core team of our organizing this. Uh, this uh, information webinar, the core team, uh, the mentors, the Clarity Research Team mentors, the Clarity Research Team Tech for Good, uh, convenor, our STEM Skills Development Program President and Vice President, and uh, namely Zydix Bongabong and Anisa Chua, also our Tech for Good student lead, we have James Mendoza, and uh, Clarity Research Team student lead, uh, overall student lead, Miss Kate Aizon. And of course, the different heads of uh, the different committee heads or the different team heads for technical teams. We have James Mendoza for secretariat. We have Anisa and the, the communications. We have Aubrey Tubo. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. And we'll be hearing from you in, in Flipgrid and Slack. So join us in our, in, join us in this campaign for clean and safe water. We'll see each other on the second day that is dated on January 22. That's on a Saturday from 9 o'clock to 12 p.m. So we'll, we'll be hearing from three from three different speakers also who are part of the Tech for Good Challenge 2021. So thank you for joining us this afternoon and we'll see each other on sa uh, next Saturday. Thank you, everyone. Bye. That's it for the first day of our webinar. I hope we can see you again on our second day on January 22. Goodbye, Ed. Goodbye everyone, and thank you for joining this webinar. Likewise, thank you, Serena.